Good morning. Today is November 25th, 2024. Um, first missionary journey. First missionary journey. In order to evangelize more effectively the world outside Judea and Samaria, the Holy Spirit now directs Barnabas and Saul, from this time on referred to as Paul, to set out on a tour of what is known today as Cyprus and central Turkey, leaving from Antioch in northern Syria and sailing from the port of Seleucia. Paul and Barnabas land at Salamis on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. After crossing the island to Paphos, they then sail for the region of Pamphylia on the southern Turkish coast, where they spend some time in the city of Perga. It is here that John Mark, who will later write one of the four gospel accounts and who has apparently been traveling with them, returns to Jerusalem. Later in the historical record, it will be seen that John's return causes some problems in the relationship between Paul and the young evangelist, but a reconciliation will ultimately prevail. From Perga, Paul's group travels to the city of Antioch in the region of Pisidia. Luke records Paul's sermon there, a sermon that is perhaps representative of Paul's preaching throughout the entire tour. Similar in some respects to Peter's sermon on Pentecost, it is principally aimed at Jews who gather in the synagogues on the Sabbath. It recites a history of God's dealings with the nation of Israel, notes the many prophecies about the coming Messiah, and sets forth Jesus as that resurrected Lord. But Paul is quick to add that even the Gentiles are now recipients of God's grace. Thereafter in Antioch and in the cities of Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe, Many Jews and Gentiles believe in Jesus, but certain ones among the Jews who are jealous of Paul's success stir up the people and instigate persecution against him. Withstanding even stoning, Paul then begins the return trip to Syria. Along the way, he will visit newly established congregations of Christians and appoint elders as spiritual shepherds in each congregation. <clears throat> Acts 13.1 in Antioch in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar-Jesus, Bar who was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elamus, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from faith, the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elamus and said, You are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind, and for a time you will be unable to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. From Paphos, Paul and his companions sailed to Perga in Pamphylia, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. From Perga, they went on to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. After the reading from the law and the prophets, the synagogue rulers sent word to them, saying, Brothers, 
If you have a message of encouragement for the people, please speak. Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Men of Israel and you Gentiles who worship God, listen to me. The God of the people of Israel chose our fathers. He made the people prosper during their stay in Egypt. With mighty power, he led them out of that country. He endured their conduct for about 40 years in the desert. He overthrew seven nations in Canaan and gave their land to his people as their inheritance. All this took about 450 years. After this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king, and he gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled forty years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. He testified concerning him, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. From this man's descendants, God has brought to Israel the Savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before the coming of Jesus, John preached repentance and baptism to all the people of Israel. As John was completing his work, he said, Who do you think I am? I am not that one. No, but he is coming after me, whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, children of Abraham, and you, God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him, they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now his witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised our fathers has fulfilled for, for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. I'll read that again. What God promised our fathers, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, you are my son. Today I have become your father. The fact that God raised him from the dead, never to decay, is stated in these words. I will give you the holy and sure blessings promised to David. So it is stated elsewhere, you will not let your holy one see decay. For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his fathers, and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Therefore, my brothers, I want you to know that through Jesus the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him everyone who believes is justified from everything you could not be justified from by the law of Moses. Take care that what the prophets have said does not happen to you. Look, you scoffers, wonder and perish, for I am going to do something in your days that you would never believe, even if someone told you. As Paul and Barnabas were leaving the synagogue, the people invited them to speak further about these things on the next Sabbath. When the congregation was dismissed, many of the Jews and devout converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who talked with them and urged them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and talked abusively against what Paul was saying. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles, for this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord, and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jews incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium and the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. 
at Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue. There they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Gentiles believed. But the Jews, who refused to believe, stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to do miraculous signs and wonders. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. There was a plot afoot among the Gentiles and Jews, together with their leaders, to mistreat them and stone them. But they found out about it and fled to the Lycaonian city of Lystra and Derbe, and to the surrounding country, where they continued to preach the good news. In Lystra there sat a man crippled at in his feet, who was lame from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed, and called out, Stand up on your feet. At that the man jumped up and began to walk. <clears throat> when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they shouted in the Lycaonian le le language, whatever that word is, the gods have come down to us in human form. Barnabas they, call, Barnabas they called Zeus, and Paul they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and wreaths to the city gates, because he and the crowds wanted to offer sacrifices to them. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed in, out into the crowd, shouting, men why are you doing this we too are only men human like you we are bringing you good news telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living god who made heaven and earth and sea and everything in them in the past he let all nations go their own way yet he has not left himself without testimony he has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons he provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. Even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. But after the disciples had gathered around him, he got up and went back into the city. The next day, he and Barnabas left for Derby. They preached the good news in the, that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging, encouraging them to remain true in the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in, church, in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came into Pamphylia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Italia. From Italia, they sent, sailed back to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done th through them, and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Okay, commentary. The Jerusalem Conference. The tour through ancient Asia Minor apparently ends somewhere around A.D. 47. Paul and Barnabas probably settle back into consecrated efforts at teaching in the local area. But their respite is not to last for long. By A.D. 48, there is trouble in the church. Certain Jewish Christians from Jerusalem go north to Antioch, teaching the Gentile Christians that they must be circumcised, in addition to being baptized, in order to be obedient to God. To the Jews, the rite of circumcision is a sign of the covenant relationship which they have with God, so it is only natural that they should think the same act would be required of Gentile Christians. But their more serious misconception lies in their belief that circumcision is required as part of keeping the law of Moses. They are not only arguing, arguing urging, urging Gentiles to be circumcised, 
but demanding that they keep the entire law, just as the Jewish Christians are continuing to do. The problem posed by these so-called Judaizing teachers will continue to divide the church in the ensuing years. It will be, and it will be a subject for discussion in several of Paul's later letters. For now, however, the problem is temporarily solved by a conference at Jerusalem in which Paul and Barnabas meet with the apostles and elders. After reviewing the work of the Holy Spirit in leading the way to Gentile evangelism, and after consulting scripture for, for prophecy concerning the Gentiles, they all agree that circumcision, and by implication the law itself, is not binding on the Gentiles. This message is sent to Gentile Christians, along with a warning that they avoid certain idolatrous practices common among pagan Gentiles. As a result of this agreement, unity will finally prevail, at least temporarily. <clears throat> okay. Acts 15, 1, in Antioch, around 48 to 50 AD. Some men came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the brothers, Unless you are circumcised, according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the brothers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders, to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers, who belonged to the party of the Pharisees, stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to obey the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the, the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He made no distinction between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear. No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the miraculous signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. When they finished, James spoke up. Brothers, listen to me. Simon has described to us how God at first showed his concern by taking from the Gentiles a people for himself. The words of the prophets are in agreement with this, as it is written. After this I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins will, I will rebuild, and I will restore it. That the remnant of men may seek the Lord, and all the Gentiles who bear my name, says the Lord who does these things, that have been known for ages. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food, food pollu polluted by idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled anim animals, and from blood. For Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times, and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. <clears throat> Then the apostles and elders with the whole church decided to choose some of their own men and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They chose Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, two men who were leaders among the brothers. With them they sent the following letter. The apostles and elders, your brothers, to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia, greetings. We have heard that some went out from us without our author authorization and disturbed you, troubling your minds by what they said. So we all agreed to choose some men and send them to you with our dear friends Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm by word of mouth what we are writing. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to burden you with anything beyond the following requirements. You are to abstain from food sacrificed to idols, from blood, from the meat of strangled animals, and from sexual immorality. You will do well to avoid these things. Farewell. <clears throat> the men were sent off and went down to Antioch, where they gathered the church together and delivered the letter. The people read it and were glad for its encouraging message. Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the brothers. After spending some time there, they were sent off by the brothers with a blessing of peace to return to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, where they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord. All right, that's it for today. All right, have a great day. See you tomorrow.